and the jinn lived on earth 2000 years before Adam. They are very strong, they are very powerful, they cause so much corruption, they killed each other. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an army of the angels to fight them. And this army of the angels fought them and pushed them out of the land and made them live on the islands of the sea. And they've been living on there till the day of judgment. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la amma ba'd. Concerning the jinn, it's a creation about which there are a lot of fairy tales, there's a lot of stories. If you go to any city, if you go to any nation, you will find that usually a part of their belief, a part of uh, their myths and their fairy tales, the jinn are mentioned. So whether it be ghosts or spirits, usually they're referring to the jinn. So this unseen world, the unseen, what they call spirits. Because this is an element of the unseen, we have to stick to the Quran and the Sunnah. Before creating Adam, Allah created the jinn. And the jinn lived on earth 2000 years before Adam. Jinn comes from the word jana. And jana means that which is concealed. So jinn means that which is hidden, that which is concealed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Ar-Rahman وَخَلَقَ الْجَانَّ مِن مَارِجٍ مِن نَّارِ And He created the jinn from a smokeless flame of fire. Is the corner of the flames that you have all the different colors, the red and the green and the blue and the orange and the yellow. They are very strong, they are very powerful, but they're very dumb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also established some of their attributes in the Qur'an. So Allah has established that they can see, that they can speak, and Allah has established that they can hear. The jinn do have genders. There, there are male jinn and there are female jinn. The jinn actually marry and have children. They have offspring. They, they procreate. So unlike the angels who are just perpetually being created, and both jinn and human beings die. They have janazas, they have graves, they have funerals. They have cultures, they have languages, they have uh, genders. They are different ethnicities and tribes, like we are. They have their languages, we don't learn them. They learn our languages to communicate with us. The jinns don't seem to have a particular shape or form. These entities in all cultures are terrifying to look at, which means they purposely take on forms that terrify because they don't have original forms bones and the dung of our animals they are the food for the jinn so when we are eating our chicken and our lamb and whatever it might be and we have the bones and we get rid of the bones if the jinn come across this and these are the good believing jinn then this will be food for them by the permission of allah they are mukallafun which means that they are responsible for their actions they have free will, just like human beings. And of them, there are righteous jinn, and of them, there are disobedient jinn. From the jinn, there are those who are Muslims and those who are non-Muslim. They have their religions, the same way we do. So you'll find jinns who are Hindu, Sikh, Muslim, atheist, those who worship the devil, whatever it might be. They have their own religion. There's difference of opinion amongst the scholars now. Did Allah send messengers from amongst themselves or the, the human messengers that were sent, were they also sent to the jinn at that time as well? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but we know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was sent as a messenger for all of the worlds. Some group of the jinn, they came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they listened to this Qur'an. And they were amazed by this Qur'an. And then they went back to their people. And then they gave da'wah to their people. The jinn are not fallen angels. Sometimes we find amongst our community, people think the jinn are angels which have disobeyed Allah. Uh, is Iblis a, a jinn or an angel? Iblis was from a jinn. Because he was so righteous, he was included with the angels and elevated to a very high level among the angels. The jinn are not spirits of the dead. We don't believe in ghosts. We believe in jinns. The souls of the dead never ever come back to. They can see us, but generally we cannot see them. 
If you hear the barking of a dog or the braying of a donkey, then seek refuge in Allah because they see what you do not see. Humans, all of them can see the jinn if and when the jinn wants to reveal himself to the human. You cannot enter the world of the jinn, but the jinn can enter your world. The jinn can appear in the form of certain animals. Many times they appear in the form of snakes. That the jinns can come and pretend to be human. They can intermingle with human. And humans won't even know that they're jinns. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah says, I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. But they cause corruption and they shed blood and they fought with each other and they corrupted this world and they caused so much evil. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent on them armies from the angels and also Iblis to fight against them. And then they were pushed and cornered to the islands of the ocean. Prophet Muhammad said, Every one of you has been assigned a companion from the, among the jinn and one from the angels. Each person has an angel assigned to him, encouraging him to good and guarding him from evil. To counteract the evil suggestions which would come from the evil source of the jinn. The jinn that is always around us, there's a jinn that particularly constantly whispers to us. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu jinn actually accepted Islam and that was something from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Jinnu Thalatha. Jinns are of three types. One type flies through the air. They can go huge distances that would take us hours or days to travel. The jinn of this type which flies, they can cover these distances in the blink of an eye. Another type comes in the form of snakes and dogs. And a third type is based in one place, but it travels about. This is the one that seems to want to irritate us, want to frighten us, want to come into our lives. Any evil jinn is referred to as a shaytan and they are the shayateen. Shaytan eats with his left hand and he drinks with his left hand. Is every jinn a shaytan and is every shaytan a jinn? The answer is no. You get shayateen from amongst mankind and you get shayateen from amongst the jinn. If you don't say Bismillah when you enter your home, then you are inviting the devils in to stay with you. If you don't say Bismillah when you eat, then you've basically turned your house in like into a hotel for them. Come, eat, drink, relax, chill out. The Prophet ﷺ said, when the night falls or when evening comes, bring your children, keep your children inside. For the devils, they spread out at that time. Then when one hour of the night has passed, let them out again and lock the doors and mention the name of Allah for the shaitan cannot open a locked door over which the name of Allah has been mentioned. The Ifrit is an especially evil and especially strong jinn. It's a type of jinn that has strength above and beyond what the other types of jinns have. Rasulullah once when he was praying, he caught a afrit, he actually caught one of the very strong jinn and the Prophet Sallallahu he thought to tie that strong jinn uh, to a pillar in the masjid but then the Prophet Sallallahu he let him go. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala given a special power to Sulaiman Alayhi to control over the jinn. When Sulaiman Alayhi ordered his army to bring the throne of Sheba, the first creature to stand up was the ifrit from the jinn. And the ifrit said, I will bring the throne to you before you stand up from your place. The throne is at Saba and Sulaiman is at Jerusalem. By flight, it will take hours and hours. Imagine how the spirit of jinn is. The jinn is going to bring this throne, not in a physical manner, pick it up and bombard out of the palaces of the Queen of Sheba. And you will see a big throne flying in the air all the way to Jerusalem and people are wondering, no, it will disappear there and appear over there, which is from our world what? From our perspective, it's teleporting. The jinn has the capacity or the power to transform matter into energy. E equals mc squared comes into play here. To has the power to transform matter into energy and take that energy at the speed of light and then rebring it back to the way that it was. Thanks to Mr. Einstein, it's actually very understandable that it is 
conceivable that energy is transferred to matter, matter is transferred. We don't have the power to do that at will. But clearly, some of the jinn do. And that is that the jinn are able to bring physical things into your house or take it out of your house without you actually seeing something moving in your house. Many magicians are using the jinn to do the magic. Any type of magic is totally haram in Islam. Some jinns had the ability to fly higher to the heavens and they can hear some talks of angels and they listen to the decree of Allah. But after the coming of Prophet ﷺ, the first heaven is closed and they are guarded by some shooting stars. So the jinns are no more able to hear. They hear something and mix hundred lies with it and they whispers into the ear of fortune teller. So the words of fortune teller are not 100% true. If anyone goes to fortune teller and ask him anything, his prayers will not be accepted for 40 days. And he has disbelieved in Islam. The jinn, they can and they do fall in love with human beings. This is one of the reasons why jinn possess a human being is due to love. One of the abilities that the, the jinn have is to possess human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions those who consume riba will stand on the day of resurrection like the person who has been beaten by a shaitan leading him to insanity. And the Mufassireen, they have used this ayah to say this is a proof for jinn possession. Indeed, the shaitan flows through the veins of the son of Adam like his blood. Again, a proof that they can enter into our body and flow through our body and control that which we do. We from the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, we have all of the tools that we need to protect our home and our families and ourselves from the shayateen. Point number one, we need to understand that the bricks and the mortar of your house don't become possessed. So it's not your house which is possessed. It's as a result of the people who are in that house, the shayateen are trying to get to the people. So the first thing to do, correct your aqeedah. The next way is to recite Surah Al-Baqarah in your home at least once every three days. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever recites Surah Al-Baqarah at night in his house, then shaitan will not enter that house for three nights. Whoever recites it during the day in his house, shaitan will not enter that house for three days. There should be no pictures or frames or statues in your home. You should avoid watching movies or listening to music in your home. These are from the traps of shaitan. Music is the words of shaitan. If you are pumping the words of shaitan around your house, around your room, the devils are going to come and join you. The next way, when you enter into your house, you must say Bismillah, enter with your right foot. When you close the door, say Bismillah. When you eat your food, say Bismillah. Whatever it might be, mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not curse the devils. Rather, say Bismillah. Perform a lot of dhikr and extra prayers in your home. The Prophet ﷺ said, when the call to prayer is made, shaitan flees on his heels. So if you are getting problems in your home, then just make the adhan. Before you go to sleep, recite Ayat al-Kursi. It will protect you from shaitan. Keep your home clean and hygienic and smelling good. Because we know that the devils, they like to congregate and stay in places of filth, places uh, which are unclean. Which is why when we go to the toilet, which is a place of filth, we make the dua because this is where the devils, they congregate. Finally, Ya Ikhwan, have patience and make a lot of dua. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the tawfiq to overcome them and be steadfast. We don't fear the jinn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is only shaitan and he frightens you. Him and his supporters, they try to frighten you. So do not fear them, but fear me if you are true believers. Shaitan is weak, ya ikhwan. Inna kayd shaytani kana da'ifa. Indeed, the plot of shaitan is weak. They're faster, they're stronger, they're invisible to us, and they can transform energy and matter back and forth. But we have more wisdom than them. And wisdom trumps physical power. We have the brains over them. 
Allah says, Indeed, over my believing servants, you, O Shaytan, you're not going to have any authority. You don't have any control over my believing slaves. And sufficient is Allah as a disposer of affairs.